Imagine that you're an executive at the North Face, which is ostensibly an outdoor recreation company. It's June of 2023, several years after the moral panic over BLM and George Floyd has started to subside. You've uh, run a few gender-bending advertisements for Pride Month to keep your overlords at BlackRock happy. Everything is normal. Everything is fine, you think. But then one weekday at 3 a.m., uh, one of your brand ambassadors, someone you're paying to represent your company to millions of people all over the world, suddenly freaks out on social media. He says that he's just been subjected to a flagrant act of white supremacy at a bar in Bozeman, Montana. He claims the culprit is a guy named John Talbot, who works at an apparel company called Outdoor Research. And then to explain exactly what he's talking about, your brand ambassador, whose name is Manoa Ainu, uploads this footage to Instagram. Watch. Hey, yo, Outdoor Research, I'm not even playing, man. This guy, John, he came up to me, introduced himself, said, you look like someone I should know. It was at a bar at the Crystal, which I often frequent. A lot of my friends are there or work there. And this guy came up to me and then started talking all this stuff, started asking questions, very directed at diversity. <laughs> and I answered honestly and um, he kept cutting me off, didn't want to hear what he was wanting to hear, but what he was asking for, which is very, very obvious. So when I started to check him on it and correct him and direct him and educate his ass for free, for free, for free, for free, for free, he got very defensive. So I said, yo, we're done talking. Conversation is over, bro told you the truth don't cut me off while i'm talking if you're asking you're not listening and you're asking very big red flag back up i went inside he came inside tried to shake my hand and i was like yo you're apologizing he just started apologizing over and over again and i'm like if you're apologetic buy me a beer at least that's the minimum you could do and Right after that, he squared up to me, got right in my face like this, and he's like, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> How do you apologize and say you don't do anything wrong within like five seconds? Oh, because you're not truly apologetic. So this guy, John, who designs product, there's something for you guys OR. Please check him. This guy's tripping. He's racist. So let's recap. The story you just heard. White guy John with Outdoor Research approached black guy I knew who works for the North Face and tried to introduce himself. And then white guy John proceeded to ask too many questions. And then to add insult to injury, he tried to shake I knew's hand. He was too polite, which, as we all know, is a telltale sign of white supremacy. Then, if you can imagine it, John refused to buy I knew a beer, which uh, saying that, that he did nothing wrong. So he denied that he was a racist. Which, which is, of course, the purest possible evidence that he is a racist. So he put it all together, and this was a modern-day lynching in Bozeman. But North Face's brand ambassador wasn't done there. For good measure, I knew also uploaded some uh, more thoughts about this highly upsetting, clearly racist incident. In one of these posts, I knew wrote, quote, I hope there are repercussions, ideally an extermination. That's what he called for, an extermination. I knew added that John had uh, displayed gaslighting, toxic masculinity, and white guilt. He accused John of wanting to fight him. He also told his 15,000 followers on Instagram, quote, reshare and tag outdoor research so this boy has consequences for his actions. Our outdoor microcosm can't have people like this. Now, again, pretend you work at the North Face or outdoor research for that matter. You're sitting in their corporate offices and you see all this. What do you do when you're confronted with a rambling video like this, which doesn't even come close to making any kind of substantive accusation at all? It's just an incitement to harass some random guy. Do you fire this brand ambassador immediately? Tell all your other brand ambassadors to stop uploading unhinged videos at three in the morning? Do you feel shame that you've invested $7 million in hiring brand ambassadors who are apparently delusional and unstable? Or for some reason, do you do as you're told and try to exterminate, quote unquote, this white dude who made the mistake of not buying some other dude a beer? Well, as you might have guessed already, the North Face went for that last option. They apparently decided that the 3 a.m. rants on Instagram about awkward encounters at a bar 
really scream outdoor recreation. So they uh, went to bat for their brand ambassador. Dave Burleson, who was the North Face's senior athlete coordinator at the time, publicly called on John's employer to punish him. Quote, outdoor research, please hold your employee, John, that is in Bozeman right now, accountable to the racists in the outdoor industry. We will find you and we will remove you. You know, it's like, uh, it's like George Bush standing on top of the rubble after 9-11 with a megaphone promising to hunt down al-Qaeda. Except in this case, they're, they're hunting down random white people who have socially awkward encounters with black men at bars. You know, basically the same thing. It's basically al-Qaeda. And it gets worse. When Dave Burleson at North Face posted that bizarre response on social media, he was apparently already aware that I knew was a deranged and unreliable activist. Just a couple of years earlier, a movie producer and ice climber named Ari Novak says that he alerted Burleson and North Face to Ainu's tendency to lie about racism. This was a, this is a, a repeat thing with this Ainu guy. So in one instance, at the 2020 Michigan Ice Festival, Novak says that he had told Ainu that it was dangerous to climb in an area that was closed at night. And in response, predictably enough, Ainu accused Novak of racism because Novak said was was trying to help him and make sure he wasn't killed, and said, "Don't climb in this area at night; it's dangerous." Uh, that made him a racist. Novak says that he told the North Face about this episode, but they seemingly didn't take any action whatsoever. Here's how uh, Novak described I knew. Quote, he's always trying to create a situation where he can have a fight over race. Now, there are many other troubling examples along these lines, but the basic idea is that North Face had reason to know all of this ahead of time. And still, despite everything they knew or should have known, they called on outdoor research to fire John Talbot. And a predictable result followed within hours, according to exclusive reporting from the Daily Wire's Spencer Lindquist, uh, outdoor research responded. And they ordered John to leave Bozeman immediately, like he was a diplomat being recalled after an international incident. And for good measure, outdoor research strongly implied that John was guilty of some unspoken act of white supremacy. They said that their company, quote, does not support or tolerate discriminatory conduct based on race or any other reason. And we take these matters very seriously. Ultimately, even though I knew admitted that Talbot hadn't said anything racist to him, outdoor research did terminate John Talbot, so he lost his career. They caved to the mob, and his reputation and livelihood was destroyed. That's all according to uh, Talbot's new lawsuit against the North Face and their brand ambassador. Talbot is fighting very hard in court to get compensation for what was done to him. And if he fails, however, and this all depends on activist courts anyway, if he fails, he'll never work in the industry again. He'll have a very hard time providing for his family. And this is what a single, incoherent, unintelligible accusation of racism can do to someone in 2023. All it takes is an unhinged black guy saying that a white guy didn't buy him a beer and his career is destroyed. If that surprises you, if that seems like something that uh, should never happen in a country with due process and the rule of law, then you should know that it's actually just the beginning. As bad as unfounded accusations of racism may be, the impact of accusations like that pale in comparison to what, to what malicious accusations of rape can do to someone. Rape accusations, they don't just end your career. They can put you in prison, whether they're true or not. Now, yesterday I went into some detail about the case of former Major League Baseball pitcher Trevor Bauer. He was a Cy Young Award winner, uh, one of the best pitchers in the league. This was not just some random baseball player. He was a star in the league. He was also a Trump supporter who said some things that trans activists didn't approve of. And now, just a couple of years later, he's been exiled to Japan because no team in the United States will hire him. Well, how did that happen? In the summer of 2021, Trevor Bauer was publicly accused of brutally beating a woman he had slept with. Here's how the the Washington Post reported on the accusations at the time. Quote, a temporary domestic violence restraining order filed against Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer and granted by a court Monday details graphic allegations about two separate encounters and includes photos of bruises and a bloodied lip suffered by the woman who obtained the order. Now, this initial article from the Washington Post was, for the most part, fair by their standards, which are pretty low. It went on to explain that the um, restraining order was issued ex parte, meaning the judge never heard Bauer's side of the story. The article included the fact that Bauer denied the allegations. The Post also reported that there were, quote, records of text messages between Bauer and his accuser in which his accuser discussed wanting to be choked and slapped during sex. Some of those messages were sent after Bauer supposedly abused this woman. After she was abused, she was apparently sending text messages talking about how she likes being slapped and choked during sex. So right away, those are massive red flags, which tell you that there are 
like at a minimum, two sides to this story. But very quickly, the news media and Major League Baseball dispensed with any pretense that Bauer was entitled to the presumption of innocence. And within days, the MLB put Bauer on administrative leave, quote unquote, which would turn out to be a permanent leave. And then a few weeks later, the Post ran a follow-up article which claimed that Bauer had beaten up another woman several years earlier in Ohio. This uh, article did not name the woman. It also didn't include a series of text messages from this accuser, which Bauer had provided to the Post weeks before their article was published. And in these messages, which were sent after Bauer allegedly assaulted this woman, we can see that the woman desperately wants to see him and to be with him. She sent him, uh, she sent him hundreds of messages while he was in the dugout at a game. And he keeps telling her that he wants to end their relationship, but she keeps bombarding him with frantic messages that are completely unhinged. Have you ever heard of data brokers? They're the middlemen collecting and selling all those digital footprints that you leave online. They can stitch together detailed profiles, which include your browsing history, online searches, and location data. They then sell your profile to a company that delivers you a targeted ad. No biggie, right? Well, you might be surprised to learn that these same data brokers are also selling your information to the Department of Homeland Security and the IRS to mask my digital footprint. I protect myself with ExpressVPN. One of the easiest ways to, for brokers to aggregate data and tie it back to you is through the, your device's unique IP address, which also reveals information about your location. When you're connected to ExpressVPN, your IP address is hidden. That makes it much more difficult for data brokers to identify who you are. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your network traffic to keep your data safe from hackers on public Wi-Fi. That's why I have the ExpressVPN app downloaded on all my devices, phone, computer, even my home Wi-Fi router. All I do is tap one button to turn it on, and I'm protected. It's that easy. Make sure your online activity and data is protected with the best VPN money can buy. Visit expressvpn.com slash Walsh. Use my link to get three extra months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Walsh. Expressvpn.com slash Walsh. Now, none of that mattered. The Washington Post didn't bother to print those messages because they knew the damage was already done. Bauer would never play baseball professionally in the United States ever again. And a few months later, indeed, the MLB formally suspended Bauer for two full seasons. The league said that it had conducted an extensive investigation and concluded that Bauer had violated their domestic violence and sexual assault policy. But somehow the MLB's investigation apparently didn't uncover the texts from Bauer's primary accuser, which, uh, which I briefly touched on yesterday. And in case you missed it, here's Bauer describing some of those messages that you would think are very, very relevant, and if you're conducting any kind of investigation into this case, like one of the first things you would do is look at these text messages. They didn't look at them at all. But here's that video again. Next victim, star pitcher for the Dodgers. A text Lindsay Hill sent to a friend before she ever even met me. What should I steal? She asked another in reference to visiting my house for the first time. The answer, take his money. So how might that work? I'm going to his house Wednesday, she said. I already have my hooks in. You know how I roll. Then, after the first time we met, net worth is 51 mil, she said. She better secure the bag, was the response. Uh, but, but how was she gonna do that? Need daddy to choke me out, she said. Being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million, read another text. Uh, then, after the second time we met, former Padres pitcher Jacob Nix told her, you gotta get this bag. I'll give you 50,000, Lindsay replied. Her AA sponsor asked her at one point, do you feel a tiny bit guilty? Not really, she replied. Since then, her legal team has approached me multiple times about coming to a financial settlement. But as I have done since day one, I refuse to pay her even a single cent. Uh, in August of 2021, Lindsay Hill's claims were heard in court. And during those legal proceedings, critical information was deliberately and unlawfully concealed from me and my legal team. Uh, information like this video, which was taken by Lindsay Hill herself the morning after she claimed she was brutally attacked, emotionally traumatized, and desperate to get away from me. Uh, and now we have the metadata, so there can be no dispute. Uh, it was taken mere minutes before she left my house on the morning of May 16th, 2021, without my knowledge or consent, of course. Uh, in it, you can see her lying in bed next to me while I'm sleeping, smirking at the camera without a care in the world, or any marks on her face. Now, last night, in response to a post from Elon Musk, Trevor Bauer said that it appeared that his accuser's lawyers had access to all this evidence the entire time. Bauer wrote that, quote, speaking specifically about the video of her laying in bed next to me with no marks on her face the morning after she claims I brutally attacked her, an email containing that video was sent to her attorney, Brian Friedman, before the hearing in 2021, and it was never turned over to us. Perhaps that's why he insisted on adding his name to the release party section in the settlement agreement. 
So this appears to be a setup from a sociopathic gold digger and potentially her attorney as well. This woman admitted that she was going to rip off Trevor Bauer, Trevor Bauer, repeatedly admitted this in writing. And, you know, in, in the interest of fairness, we should tell you that as of this week, this woman, the woman in question here is, 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 uh, is still coming up with what she says are innocent explanations for these text messages. She, she's appearing on podcasts saying that, that all those text messages are, were sarcastic. She was just being sarcastic. And that Trevor Bauer did abuse her, as she said he did. She says these texts are, are being taken out of context. It's really hard to imagine a context that would vindicate her in this case, but that's what she's claiming. At the same time, this woman agreed to drop her claims against Bauer without receiving a single cent from him, which is a pretty strong indicator that she doesn't have a case. But either way, Trevor Bauer will be able to uh, continue his career such as it is in Japan and probably only in Japan. But this could have ended very differently. Trevor Bauer was also investigated by the local district attorney. And that's something that doesn't happen when you're accused of, like, you know, offending a random black guy at a bar, at least not yet. Prosecutors in California were thinking of throwing Trevor Bauer in prison, you know, maybe for the rest of his life, as they've done in many similar cases. Now, fortunately for Trevor Bauer, the evidence was completely non-existent, so the DA's office ultimately concluded there was no case there. They couldn't try it even if they wanted to, and they probably wanted to. But the potential was there. And this is why false rape accusations are, as I said yesterday, just as evil and just as dangerous to society as rape itself and should be treated as such. Fabricated rape accusations have the potential to ruin lives and families and, and put people in prison. And if you knowingly subject someone to that kind of hell, then you should face a lifelong punishment yourself. But of course, that's not what's going to happen here. The woman who apparently lied about Trevor Bauer, will likely face no consequence at all. The only consequence is that she doesn't get any money from her lawsuit. Now, at the same time as Trevor Bauer himself admits, this doesn't mean that men are completely powerless to avoid being in these kinds of situations. Here's Bauer's reflection on what he thinks he did wrong in all of this. This is from early last year, before uh, he could go into details about the specifics of the charges against him. Uh, but watch what he said. In evaluating my life over the recent months, uh, it's clear that I've made some poor choices, particularly in regards to the people that I've chosen to associate with. But I am not the person that this woman, her lawyers, and certain members of the media have painted me to be. Now, that's some honest self-reflection, which is something that you very ra rarely see these days. And what Trevor Bauer is saying is absolutely right. You know, men can choose not to hook up with random floozies. They can choose not to engage in this kind of uh, sexual behavior with women they barely know, which is, for one thing, the moral path. It also happens to be the smart path from a purely self-interested perspective. If you want to protect yourself, that's what you would do. Now, this isn't to blame Trevor Bauer for what happened to him. He's not responsible for this woman's pathology. At the same time, we should acknowledge that these kinds of psychopathic women are out there. And they will lie and smear innocent men in order to make uh, some money, in order to exercise their control, to get whatever sick thrill they get out of it. Just like there are sociopathic race hustlers out there who have no compunction about ruining the lives of, of innocent people like John Talbot. And no matter how well-meaning you are or what your politics are, keep in mind, John Talbot had literally worked on DEI committees in the past. But even then, you are vulnerable. The identity of your accusers will matter far more than the facts of whatever situation you're involved in. So all that means is that we should keep all that in mind and act accordingly. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.